Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion, the entrance into Holy Week, with Easter just around the corner. We thank you for uh, joining in worship this, this day, on a day where we continue to have to uh, not gather together and worship. How strange that is for us and our experience. Yet the Word of God, ever efficacious, does its work in his will where and when he pleases. So let us join together in receiving the good news of God and Jesus Christ on this Palm Sunday. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, as we recall your son's triumphal entry into Jerusalem before his passion, the throngs hailing him as king, spreading their garments and palm branches before him and shouting Hosanna, accept also our praises and enable our walk in the way of the king you sent to save us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear God's testimony to his dear son in the gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. In it, it is related to Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they recalled these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday is from Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall be not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not account equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, 
taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In John chapter 12, we hear Jesus say, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How could you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things, because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Ordinarily at this time, I would uh, pause and invite the, the younger children to come forward for the young believer's message. This day, we'll do it uh, uh, through the modern technology available to us. And so I invite you to tune in and participate, even though we're in different places this day. In Matthew chapter 21, we hear that on the day after Jesus is entering into Jerusalem, the blind and the lame came to Jesus in the temple and he healed them. 
uh, that the religious leaders, the chief priests and the scribes, when they saw these wonderful things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they were in indignant. And they said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes. Have you never read, even from the mouths of infants and nursing babes, you have prepared praise? And leaving them, he went out of the city to, of, to Bethany, and there he lodged. Yes, on a Sunday long ago, Jesus entered Jerusalem, and the people of all age groups were excited to see him. After all, they'd heard about his miracles, especially that he just raised Lazarus from the dead. That's right, Lazarus was no longer dead. Jesus had raised this man who'd been dead four days back to life. Lazarus was alive and well, and people were very excited about this news. They were excited to see this miracle worker. And as Jesus came close to the city, they saw him riding on top of a donkey, and they shouted to him, Hosanna! That's way better than saying hip hip hooray, as if we were saying, isn't this great? For Hosanna is actually a prayer. It means save, we pray. And by shouting Hosanna, they were saying that this Jesus, who was entering the city of Jerusalem atop a donkey, had the power to save. But by the very next day, Monday of that week, Many of the adults were no longer praising Jesus. Oh, some had turned God's house into a den of thieves. They were extorting money from the hands of those who had come to worship the Lord in the temple. Other adults were grumbling to Jesus that children, like some of you, were still shouting to Jesus in the temple, Hosanna to the Son of David! Remembering those special days today, I really plan to have you, our children and youth, leading us into God's house of worship, waving palm branches, saying our hosannas together. And while this terrible virus has kept us from being able to be together in God's house this morning, we can still, from our various homes, celebrate Jesus coming to save us. So on the count of three, I invite you, whatever your age group, to join in and shouting with me, Hosanna. One, two, three, Hosanna! Save, we pray. Yes, you and I, though we're in a distance from each other, still believe that Jesus has power to save. One day we'll be back into this place of worship or into the sanctuary of Trinity and hope, and we'll be rejoicing to be together once again, receiving the gifts of God and praising his glorious name, much like the people did on that first Palm Sunday and the children did the next day. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, we don't only believe that to be true, we know it by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, at work in our lives. And that's why we call Jesus our Savior. Well, be blessed this Holy Week as you continue to spend most of your time in your homes. May the Lord bless you and give you the patience to deal with everybody else under that roof and also help you not to forget your Savior who is with us always. Amen. I invite you, I've sent out an email uh, with the text to a couple hymns that we will sing. Uh, the first being, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. I'm going to be singing it here in this particular sanctuary, but I invite you to join along from wherever you may be this morning. Let us join together in singing the hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Ride on, ride on in majesty, our goal of tribes, Hosanna cry. O Savior, meek, pursue thy road with palms and scattered garments strewn. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly fire. 
We also hear in these accounts the revelation of God's gift for us to live. Where? Well, in Jesus, the burden bearer born to take away our sins and to give us life. Not many would prefer, now many would prefer to kind of ignore this image of Jesus as the bearer of the burden of our sins. Many would prefer to deny their sinfulness before God proclaim their self-righteousness, that they're doing a pretty good job before God. Some would rather worship him simply by exalting him, by lifting up his name on high as king. Yet, hear the word of God. What does it display for us this day? It shows us how easily we human beings turn a deaf ear to God. God's perfect holy testimony also reveals that Jesus comes not to revel in being exalted by us, but rather to be lifted up on a tree of death with our sin. For if he does not bear your sin, you can't worship him rightly as the one he truly is. To worship Jesus rightly is to have him bear your sins. If your sins aren't on him, and they're still on you. And that leaves you lost to God. For you cannot redeem yourself. And if Jesus does not carry your sin, then you have no true lasting life in you. For still today he comes to you and me not to be served, but to serve sinners. To lay down his life for us. To bear our sin's guilt, our shame, and God's punishment in our place. To bear you and me in his nail-pierced hands. On his whip to shreds back. Our good shepherd giving his life for his sheep. So as to carry us through death to everlasting life. Not into the old, but into the more perfect heavenly Jerusalem. And that's what God places before us and his church this week. What God says it means to confess Christ as Lord. The faith we confess with our lips points to Jesus as the crucified Lamb of God sacrificed for us, the scapegoat upon whom all our sins are laid. He who made himself nothing. Jesus, our willing burden bearer, will to do this, and it's how he wants us to see him. Going forth under the whip to the cross, he would have gone anyway. Such is his love and mercy. It compelled him, and his compassion kept him there on a cross to die so that we might live, even as people declared, if you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. He was, so, he was bound so as to free us from our burdens of sin and death and the devil with every trouble and worry and pain they bring. He came to free us to live for him and his kingdom already here on earth. And one day, heaven without end. Paul instructs us, have this mind among yourselves. Have the mind seen Jesus as your perfect servant, your burden bearer who did not count equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant and humbling himself even to the death, death on a cross. Have this mind among yourselves. Confess this faith, that Jesus bore the sin of the world, but also the burden of your sin for you. And have this mind, which is already yours in Christ Jesus. His life is now ours, as Jesus unburdens us of our load of sin in order to bear each other's burdens. He forgives, and so he frees us to forgive. His love enabling you and me to love. Our Savior serves to free us to serve and to do so joyously. Not that because we have to but because we can, led by his Holy Spirit. And this is God's good and holy will for us all. 
For God so greatly loves and treasures you and me that he has given us his son who took our place and became the bearer of all our sins so as to give us his kingdom and his life. He gives all that we need for our lives in the here and the now and forevermore. Oh, mind you, we can't earn God's forgiveness or approval or our rescue from death or heaven itself. For here, in Christ, it is freely given us. When he died, his last will and testament took effect. Here is resounding for you, your Savior, and mine pledges, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is already yours and mine to receive if we will, so as to free us to love and forgive and serve with the mind of Christ, confessing him with our lips and our lives. God's New Testament signed and sealed with Jesus' holy and innocent blood takes effect in our lives. God's witness in his blood shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. Here, a divine inheritance, ours for the taking, with God's pledge and seal of his divine favor. For God's supplied scapegoat, Jesus, is still serving us with his very body and blood to give life and freedom, in order that just as he left Jerusalem differently than he entered, so too might we leave this earth in a different fashion than we entered. After all, we entered, burdened with our sin, but our burden bearer took it all upon himself. He has come to take away our sins and our sorrows, all our cares and concerns, so that his blood be upon us and our children in the most wonderful of ways. His blood of forgiveness, his blood of life, shed in love for you and me to free us from sin's death, Free us from selfishness to serve God in selfless love and joy. For indeed our cries, Hosanna, save, we pray, are fulfilled with Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. First his self-sacrificing service for us on the cross, and then our justification come with his resurrection from the dead. He went to that cross and to that tomb for you and for, for me to bear our burdens. He didn't consider it beneath him or too lowly a service or even demeaning to his divinity in any fashion. On the contrary, it was exactly what a loving God would do. And so the Son of God did it and still comes to serve us, taking what is ours, all that filth, all that sin, our death, and giving us what is his, life and purity and right relationship with God. So, this year, how shall we greet our servant King Jesus? On this holy week where we cannot gather in the households of worship and prayer and praise of our God, how are we going to do that? Oh, by doing this week as we are to do every week, to welcome our Savior King and sin bearer into our lives as he comes to us through his word, much as those throngs welcomed Jesus long ago. Same Savior, same pardon for sin, same prayer, Hosanna. Indeed, blessed is he who comes to us in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, continue to guard your hearts and your minds always through the same Christ our Lord, the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the church. At the end of each intercession, I, as your pastor, will be saying, Lord, in your mercy, I would ask that your response be save, we pray. Again, save, we pray. Let us pray.
Jesus, King of the ages and Savior of mankind, enter Jerusalem to the cries of Hosanna, save, we pray. By week's end, he will have answered those pleas by laying down his life for the sins of the world, dying, bearing our iniquities too. Therefore, let us likewise implore him, Lord, in your mercy, save, we pray. Holy Father, as once your Son was welcomed with palms and hosannas, help us to welcome him who comes to us this day in his word. Keep your scattered church in your mercy, kept faithful by you and ever numbered within your kingdom. Guard against us against all false teachings and help us to discern truth from error, that none might be lost from the fellowship of your Son. Look with kindness on us in these times of social distancing. Comfort us with your promises, including that we remain one in the mystical body of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, and part of the great communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy, save, we pray. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. As you have declared that your word will not return to you void, but will accomplish your purposes, bless the proclamation of your saving word of Christ throughout various media during this pandemic, that many may keep the faith with holy and joyful hearts, trusting in Christ as their only Savior, and others may be brought to that faith by the working of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, save, we pray. Jesus, son of David, your hands were bound as if you were the thief. You were driven out of town like a prophet. You, O oh Lord, were sacrificed like a lamb. Yet, Savior Jesus, you were willing to suffer all for us, the guilty, when you yourself were innocent, becoming sin for us and bearing God's wrath against our sin. Give to your word success and deliver us from darkness and fear that we may walk in your light with face assurance in this world of trial and also have hope for the world yet to come. Lord, in your mercy, save, we pray. Ruler over all, you have established the kingdom of the left and hold accountable all who govern in this and every place. Therefore, guide our president, members of Congress, the governor of the state, and all our public servants in these challenging times that they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice and protecting the citizens entrusted to them. Give them both the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to some semblance of stability. This to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, save, we pray. Lord Jesus, for your grace, all sufficient for all our needs, you came doing good pledging to be the strength of the weary, the hope of the fearful, healer to the sick, the fullness of the disabled, and the peace of your distressed people. Hear us on behalf of our nation and the world, suffering pandemic and isolation. Grant the peace of your presence and your healing touch to those suffering in hospitals or at home, and especially to our loved ones and family in the faith. Strengthen all medical personnel in this harrowing time and supply all with what they need by your grace in this and every subsequent time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, save, we pray. Blessed Father, you give food to the hungry, providing for all our needs in this mortal life. Grant us each a grateful heart and knowledge to use wisely all that you have entrusted to our care. Bless all working to make, prepare, deliver, and serve our daily bread, and give relief to those whose work has been halted for our time. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and rules all of creation in love, and who has taught us with boldness to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 
Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this new day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you that is smile upon you and give you peace. Amen. I would enjoy those of you who are inclined to uh, turn to, uh, hopefully you uh, printed the paper with the hymns appointed for today. Let us join together in singing Hosanna, Lao Hosanna. If you're not inclined to sing, but you have the words before you, please follow along. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children say, through pillar, court, and temple, the lovely and the rain, to Jesus who had blessed them close folded to his breast, the children sang May the Lord continue to keep you in his peace 
and grant you to serve him even in these difficult times of isolation from one another with great joy that he is with us now and always and forever. Peace be with you. Amen.